Hey everybody, welcome to Riders Meeting. We are covering the opening round from Anaheim. It's January, the start of a 2024 Supercross season. I'm David Pingree, I'm your host today, joined by Bruce Murata, one of our editors here at Whiskey Throttle Media. And we're gonna go over the 250 class first. There was a lot that went on. Um, most of the action kind of happening in the big class, but there were some things to talk about here in the 250 class. And let's start with the heats. Um, Jordan Smith, Max Mullen both got heat wins. Both looked great right away. I think for Smith, not a surprise. He's been fast for years, you know, just um, hasn't been able to put together a full season. Uh, I remember him riding for the TLD team and he dang near won it. He took that title fight to Vegas, lost it there at the last round, but he's been in contention for a decade, you know, almost with yeah. this, uh, in this 250 class. And then Max, ever since he switched to the pro circuit bike, has been a different rider. Yeah, yeah. So, like you said too with Jordan, um, I mean, it, it was no surprise to me that he could take this win in the heat race. Uh, he's, I mean, he's always had the speed. Uh, I think he even said it too um, after the race. He was saying something how he feels like he's kind of starting his career over um, just because of he just had like this bad luck run all these yeah. years and he's figured out kind of, you know, because <clears throat> he's kind of always been that rider that's just been out of control, wild. Well, he had a wrist injury that was really bad too for those couple of years. That, yeah, it was but, kind of a reset for him. Yeah, and he just he he was just making a lot of mistakes in his career, you yeah. know. And that's where he's like, man, I got to figure some stuff out because the speed's there. That's Always has it. Yeah, yeah. So well, he showed it again. Uh, great heat race for him. Uh, another guy who was in that first heat. We're gonna kind of follow this guy's story along. Is Billy Leninovich. Uh, the 40-year-old motocrosser here uh, at 40 wants to make a main. I don't know what the real motivation for all this is, but it's been really a fun storyline to watch. And he was in the toughest heat. I feel like if you looked at the, the rider list in both of those heats, heat one was way more stacked. And that's just based on time qualifying. No one's handpicking those. It just is yeah. what it is. Um, but he got a bad start, mm -hmm. came back to 11th, and they take nine. So he missed it, went to the LCQ, last place start again, and uh, just didn't quite get there. So didn't make the main this time. But uh, and, and we talked a little bit about this, you and I watching. Uh, he had 450 suspension on the bike. They just thought they would just bolt it on because he had a 450 already set up. And it didn't, it didn't look great, I'll say. So yeah. they're going to work on some stuff this week. He had some gearing issues. I mean, this is what happens when you, you've been off for a decade and you decide yeah. to come back yeah. and race Supergrass. Yeah. And I do, <clears throat> like watching him in the LCQ, um, I mean, he was like for how bad his start was. I mean, he was picking guys off though. Oh yeah, like he's coming he, through. Like yeah, he's coming through. So like you said, if he can get a good start, I think he's gonna be just fine. And I mean, for getting eleventh in that first heat race, I mean, yeah, that class was stacked. So it was. Uh, there's another guy I want to mention. You and I again, we were watching the, the stuff together, and in practice, time qualifying. We saw Carson Mumford kind of messing with Joe Shimoda. Mm -hmm. um, took him high in a turn, like really aggressive for practice and qualifying. And then did a sprint lap and then kind of waved Joe by like, go what? ahead, you know. And that was kind of weird. And I even yeah. asked the Honda guys about it. They're like, yeah, what the heck was that about? Like, Well, yeah. I, I seen him like go over the finish line and like give him like this like weird look back and like, I, I can't find like a video that shows it, but he did like this weird thing with his hand. Like, I don't know if he was like, yeah, I, I don't know. It was really weird. Gestured but, to him. Somewhere, yeah, somehow, yeah. Yeah. But I got to say like Carson actually looked really good. So he came out in that heat and I don't know if he whole shot or maybe he made a pass to the lead early and he led for half the main, yeah. half the heat. Yeah. And he was flying. Yeah. I, yeah. And he ended up getting fourth. Um, but yeah, he was, I, I was surprised. Yeah. It was actually, he showed some speed and, and some fight, I guess. Um, I, I think he needs to be a little more tactful the way he does it. Like mm -hmm. messing with the factory Honda guy when you're on a Honda support team is not super bright, but yeah, he showed that he's out there really trying to get something done. I like to see that. Um, main event time, Julian Beaumaire. Holy cow. We had talked about this preseason that this kid is the real deal. The guys, Ian Harrison at KTM, when he comes up to me, he goes, dude, this kid is, he is fast. Yeah. Ian won't just offer that up. Like he was really impressed. And so I went, oh, okay. I have to watch this kid. And sure enough, man, he was on it. Well, and that was like the talks that I've been having with uh, Davey Millsaps is, you know, preseason training and all that. Davey kept telling me like, no, this kid's like, he's the real deal. Yeah. And we've talked about this before where Davey's not going to just go work for anyone. Like mm -hmm. he's going to really 
pick who he wants to work with. And so Davey's like, no, this kid's like, he's going to, yeah, he's going to be the one. But what surprised me is because there was like a lot of talk how he kind of seemed a little, you know, little, uh, just that typical rookie, like at the test track, kind of like a little wild, like, Mm -hmm. you know, a little overzealous. Yeah, Yeah. A little out of control. Man, when it came race time, that kid looked like he was a veteran in the sport. Totally. Like, it surprised yeah. me. I mean, I know he made that little mistake um, as he was leading the main. Or no, I'm sorry. He led the main, but then once RJ and Jordan got past him, he had the PC boys behind him. And he kind of, after that second set of whoops, he kind of overshot that right hander a little bit and got Well, passed. it was Kitchen that came inside and actually just pushed him. It wasn't dirty, but th- this would be... A rookie learning lesson, right? Like right. Kitchen came in and pinched him right to the tough blocks and he just sort of tipped over, like yeah. kind of tipped off the track and had to stop. It cost him some time. Yeah. Um, and you've just got to be a little more aware when you hear a bike right behind you like that, you either mm-hmm. have to cover that line or anticipate that he's coming in. Yeah. Just one of those things he's got going to have to learn. It's, it's, um, it was no big deal. Amazing night for him. Like, yeah, I think he showed the world like, Hey, I'm for real. Well, and all the riders can tell you this. Once you experience leading laps like that, that's huge. Yeah. For his confidence. It normally just, it normally takes guys a year or two to even do what he just did. For sure. And that's where like, cause I've talked to some of the riders before where they're like, man, i that's the first time I've ever led like a race. Yeah. And now I know that feeling. Yeah. And he, I mean, he did it his first race. He know? led what, almost half the main, yeah, I would say, I, right? Yeah. I mean, it was a while. And a while. so in his head now, already, he's made this huge leap to go, oh, I, I can lead. I have the yeah. speed. You know, I, I made mm-hmm. a couple little mistakes. I got to clean up. And where he was getting his butt kicked was the whoops. Yeah. Um, all, especially the top three, mm-hmm. they were working him. Like yes. way, way better, way consistent, more speed. And that's normal. Uh, so yeah. Whoops are tough. You know, he's used to the test track whoops that are probably hard, square edge, but even. Mm-hmm. Those rups, whoops last night got cups. They got funky. Everyone was struggling a bit. Even very seasoned guys were, were having a hard time, so it threw him off. Yeah. But great ride for him. Uh, the Kitchen and Smith battle was interesting. Those two went back and forth for a while. Um, Voland, uh, he was actually the one that pushed Juju into the tough blocks. And again, mm-hmm. it wasn't dirty. It was just, that's a, that's a pro pass. You know, yeah, welcome that's, to the big racing. leagues. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, and great ride between teammates. Those two guys, Voland and Kitchen, um, got aggressive. I don't think anything was dirty or, or, or worth, you know, saying it was uncalled for, but those two both wanted that last podium spot. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, they weren't afraid to kind of bump each other around for it. So all, all's fair. I think, um, one guy who should have been up in that mix, Nate Thrasher, one of the star racing Yamaha guys. Um, I thought this was interesting and I didn't catch it until today watching the re the highlight reels on that little hip jump. That's where he crashed and we didn't, we didn't see it happen, but we saw the aftermath. Yeah, he hit the same little kicker that that would catch Cooper Webb, his teammate in the big leagues class, later in his main event and put him over the bar. Same thing happened. Whatever this little, there must have been a little notch, and I'm surprised it didn't catch more guys. Sent him straight over the bar. So glad he's okay. He'll be back next weekend. But I thought that was super interesting. And then the one other thing I want to talk about in this class, the Red Cross flags. Um, it was the uh, AEO Sports guy that went down, um, Lux Turner. Yeah. And I don't know, I hope he's okay. Don't yeah. know the injuries, didn't hear much about it. But he was off to the track for quite a while and they had the Red Cross flags out. And all of the guys did a good job of minding the flags, but it's, it's real gray area, right? Like um, how hard you can race through that section. And I think that Max Volan, um, and you could argue that either the other guys weren't as cautious as they should have been, given enough respect to the flag, or he was giving too much because he got passed by Kitchen rolling through there kitchen rolled up along mm-hmm. the side of him just was going through it faster keeping his wheels on the ground still within the rules i think mm-hmm. but it cost voland uh, a couple of spots yeah and i was even talking to you about that because i'm like hey ping like where like can they start jumping once they pass it right yeah and- so from the flag where the first flag is the uh, red uh, white cr- with a red cross flag you have to be wheels on the ground from that point until you're past the downed rider okay yeah uh, that's the rule now Wheels on the ground, there's obviously a little bit of cushion there because the guys are, wheels are coming off the ground. Mm-hmm. It's just you're not supposed to double anything or jump anything, right? Yeah. 
but you can still race through it. And yeah. it's very hard for these guys to go, oh, okay, I need to keep my wheels on the ground, but keep a, a racy mindset. Uh, Smith, after the race, a lot of the guys were talking about it. Man, it's really hard to, you know, your, your ball's out for the whole track, then you get to the section, and you have to roll it. And then all of a sudden you have to pick it back up and go again. It's very hard. It throws you out of your rhythm. Well, and I think where they had that Red Cross flag at, so it's like you could still triple in, but then they had the flag right there. So it's almost kind of like blind. Yeah. And it's like, I almost feel like if they're going to put a red flag in an area like that, they should just start it in the beginning of the lane. I agree. Do the whole lane where they have to roll the whole section because, I mean, dudes were like still tripling in. And then in that transition, once they landed, they're just hard on the brakes. Yeah. And you know, that's kind of blunt. And, and that surprised me too. Like that, the, the flagger was like down on the downside of it. He so, was not in a good place. He should have been on that second jump, which was bigger. Yes. On the inside. Yep. Pushing people wide, mm -hmm. showing the flag there. Right. He was on the fourth jump on the left, you know, kind of pushing them toward it. It was a screwy and look. They're trying to make decisions in the heat of the moment, and I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying in a perfect world, he would have run across the track and gotten up to that bigger jump. So as they came out of the turn, they'd have seen it, Yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, it it definitely affected the main and a little bit, and it, it sucked, but obviously rider safety is number one. I hope that uh, Lux is okay. Uh, seemed like he was. It wasn't too bad, but um, yeah. Yeah. they hope were tending he, to him. I hope he's good. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, so that was it. Um, let's go through the results here. RJ gets the win and a huge win for him. First mm -hmm. win at day one. You know, there's always the internet uh, trash talkers that, oh, he's been in this class forever. Look, this, this class just, it's not what it used to be. It used to be a stepping stone to get to the big class. Well, the big class is full. I mean, you have to be a champion to really get a spot to go up. Right. Otherwise, or, or just quit or go race the arena cross or retire. Those are your choices. And so, um, I, I get... I get bothered when people say, oh, he should move up. He's an old man. He's got kids. Well, so does Jordan Smith. So it's been in a long time. You know, Shimoda's actually been at it now for some years. Like, this is just what it is. Yeah. You know, it's it's people trying to prove themselves to get a, a title to move up. I right. mean, that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, there has to be a place for you to go. RJ wins. Great ride for him. And probably the best I've ever seen him look, huh? Yeah. Yeah. He rode good. And, um, I mean... Talking with him before the race, and he even said, he's like, dude, I, I'm going to win tonight. Yeah, so, like, pretty confident. Yeah, and, and he, I mean, he's been saying that. I mean, of course he's saying that seasons before, but he even said he's like, this year has to happen. Mm. So um, I still feel like he's sometimes gets a little, like he definitely makes oh. me a little nervous. Like I'm like, come on, RJ, like you're good, you're good, you know, but it's hard for that kid not to, you know, he's but, growing his mechanic and he, team manager's hair gray. Yes, because he for just sure. he doesn't know how to smooth out and just yeah. chill. It's full freaking throttle all the yeah. time. He's fun to watch. Yeah, and his corner speed, like before that rhythm lane where you tripled out, was unreal. Yeah, like unreal. Yeah, like when he's behind Juju, I think I was even telling you, I'm like, gosh, Ping, does he need to push that hard? You know, <laughs> yeah, like no, but but it's like. Yeah. I get it. Like he's trying to get into that number one spot. Like that's what you have to do. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, if someone's in front of me, he's going to do whatever it takes to get around that guy. But I'm like, RJ, you know, you're going to get around him. Just be a little patient. You know? <sighs> well, I know it, it's hard. But that's hey, how he rides. But hey, he yeah. got the job done. Uh, Jordan Smith, a uh, little bit, you know, RJ got out to a lead. And I mean, he was seven, yeah. seven to nine seconds out pretty early. Like mm -hmm. it happened pretty quickly. And by the time Smith got to second clean, he was just gone. And yeah. I don't think there was much he could do. And then, like I said, that kitchen uh, and battle with Max um, was a good one. Kitchen got the better of him. And then Shimoda got, got Max again in, those, uh, in the red cross flag section. Not breaking any rules, just, yeah. just rolling through it faster. And I hope Max learns that lesson and goes, okay, I, I have to keep my wheels on the ground, but I can still race through it, yeah. you know, if that makes sense. So yeah. it's a weird thing. You know, and I'm sure he's going, I go, these guys were going through there too fast. It's like, well, what do you say, man? It's like, I yeah, I know. And that's kind of what Kitchen was even saying. He's like, I mean, you know. My, like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't jump what, things. Yeah. I, I was just, like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so Max ended up fifth, and it was still a great night for Max. I think he's got a lot to be proud of and a lot to build from. He had the speed all night. He's um, looked, I think, better than he ever did on the KTM. So good for him. Bo Mayer ended up sixth. Great night for the rookie. Garrett Marchbank, seventh. Uh, Mitchell Oldenburg, eighth. He's 
been around a long time, great rider as well. He looked good all night. Rider D in ninth, and then Mumford was back to 10th um, there at the end of the night. Decent ride for him as well. So um, that's our top 10. Uh, let's move up to the 450 class. Uh, let's see. So let's start right out of the heat, man. Uh, heat race winners were Webb and Roxon, and uh, I was stoked to see Coop. Like, you could tell right away he was game. He's he, yeah. he's here ready to race. And mm -hmm. the, the difference between what we saw in SMX and Paris to now, huge change. Yeah. What would yeah. you say? Yeah, well, <clears throat> what I noticed too with Webb, I mean, yeah, definitely huge change. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm still surprised, like how, mm. I mean, he shocked me. Like I was like, and, and, but I, I wanted that because I wanted yeah. to see like the old coupe come back, which he did. Um, there was one time in the heat race where he started like checking out. I felt he started pulling from Jet but then Jet started turning it on and started reeling him back in. Yeah. And then Jet made that mistake where he kind of fell into the tough block there. And yeah. That gave Cooper some. I think we would have seen a good fight had Jet not well, made that bottle. And that's the thing, like, but Coop likes that pressure. Oh yeah. Coop yeah. likes that pressure. But we've also seen this from Jet in the Nationals, where ten minutes into the moto, you're like, he's he's falling back. He he's give, yeah. maybe he's just gonna play it safe and. Let this guy go. And then he just, he just turned, something, yeah. he, he gets comfortable and he goes, okay, time to go. And man, he turns it on and he can he can reel guys in. It's wild to see. Yeah. Um, and I would say overall in the 450 class, we didn't really get to see the battles we were all hoping for. Yeah. Um, the Tomac jet battle, the, you know, none of them. They no, None of them really took place except for Anderson and Webb and that ended poorly. We'll get to that. Uh, the other thing in that first heat was Hunter Lawrence. Man, he had no luck. And, um, don't care, you know, this guy is a easily inside the top 10 yeah. with just any kind of luck. And mm -hmm. I guess I say luck. He got a bad start. Well, he crashed in the first Cra uh, crash heat, in the and it was a dirty crash. He slammed pretty good. I'm surprised he got up. Of course, if you're playing Moto Memes Bingo, uh, I, I think it's the eye column. Visor comes off, you get a spot. So uh, lost his visor again. That was two times this weekend because he yeah. crashed on press day two. And that first, that crash was... Sexton was involved in that one. Yeah, Sexton went yeah. down as well. He was yeah. able to get up and remount and get going quickly. Um, but it was uh, just a bad start for Hunter. He'd go to the LCQ, get a terrible start, literally dead last, almost crash. He caught his front, his handlebar on the tough block trying to cut to the inside. Um, and it could only come back to fourth and almost no, passed no, Cade Clayson, right? Yeah, yeah. Fit, no, yeah, he was caught fourth. Yeah. yeah. And oh, man, Cade. That kid, he's the one that always gets sometimes like that last spot. And I even call it out. I'm like, man, Ping, it's going to be hard to pass Cade. Yeah. And everyone thought that last lap he's going to get Cade. And that, man. He's, gonna make... he's smart. He's used to those yeah. LCQs. That, that's and... what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah, Cade made it happen, man. Yeah, um, I wonder if, you know, Hunter was obviously trying to just dive inside mm -hmm. and, and kill him. And Cade covered it so well, he, he just took that card away from him. Yeah. I wonder if Hunter had just railed the berm if he could have went around him. Hindsight's 2020, right? But yeah. Either way, Hunter Lawrence did not make the main and I'm sure he's steaming, but uh, better days ahead for him. Yeah. That was certainly not normal. Um, I do want to give a shout out here before we keep going any further to the sponsors of this show, Rock and Turf and Maxxis Tires. Man, uh, stoked to have both of these brands on board. Maxxis Tires making obviously a ton of stuff on the motorcycle world with Jeremy. They've really used McGrath to uh, develop that, that line of tires, but also their light truck tires. They've got a crazy bunch of different uh, models, depending on how gnarly you want to get uh, out in the mud or just some cool looking off-road tires, they have them. Uh, so check those guys out, maxis.com or at Maxxis Tires on Instagram and Rock and Turf. These guys do concrete work and artificial turf, and they make these really cool uh, artificial turf mats for, you know, I use one to change when I want to put my gear on, mm -hmm. just back of my truck or, you know, if you don't have a, a good place to change, throw these mats down and they fold right up and go in your gear bag. They're awesome. But what they originally are as a brand is uh, artificial turf for yards and landscaping and then concrete work. Yeah. And they do awesome stuff. They're based here in Southern California, but obviously the mats can ship anywhere and they make them in different sizes. So whether you're at the beach or camping or whatever, they're great. Yeah, I used mine today. They were, I actually rode in the mud today, and I put mine in the back of the truck next to my gear bag, put all my shoes and you know my yeah. stuff on the little mat. Yeah. Yeah, they, they were great. Well, I'm stoked to have those guys on board. Yeah. So big thank you to Rock and Turf and Maxxis Tires. Um, okay, so heat races are in the books, um, and we go to the main event. And 
lots of stuff went down here. Uh, Jet gets a whole shot, of course, right beside him, Jorge Prado, the world champion, yeah. who's known for his starts. This guy is a whole mm -hmm. shot machine. Yeah. And, um, you know, there was a lot of chatter about how he would do, right? And I, I didn't want to underestimate him. I'm like, you don't win a world title being a clown. And I, I, we saw him ride a little bit and just in videos and stuff. And you go, oh, okay, he's got timing. This isn't like, I think people are thinking back to like Albi or Tortelli. I think those guys were just more geared up to ride motocross. And Jorge, for whatever reason, has just the timing. He just has that technical touch. And he looked great. If it weren't for the whoops, he'd have been in the top 10 last night. I believe it. For sure. He looked really good, uh, but he did get shuffled back from second uh, over the course of the main, but he was in the top 10 for 15 laps. Mm -hmm. uh, great ride for him. And he'll, and he'll get better. Oh yeah. As he oh, experienced, yeah. I mean, it's his first Supercross race ever. Our, my buddy, Denny Stevenson is adamant that he will not see the top 10 in these first three races. And I, I kind of raised my eyebrows and went, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. I bet he does it next weekend. It's my opinion. Yeah, I bet he's in the top 10 next yeah. weekend in San Francisco, but we'll talk about that later. We do have a sight lap show that will be coming to you guys Thursday, so stay tuned for that. Um, Jet just kind of took off, huh? Like, we did see some mistakes out of him. Um, nothing major, but like, at the end of the sand section, he came in hot a couple times and lost the rear end. Uh, we saw him get crossroaded a couple times in the rhythm lane. Just little bobbles, the whoops yeah. a couple of times, a little jiggy, and he's really good at taking a mistake and just correcting it and just moving forward. Yeah, you know? it was almost like he meant to do it. Yeah. You go, wait, was that a mistake? Yeah. Because I can't tell, he made it yeah. look so pretty. Yeah. Uh, but he kind of just took off and at a point, Jason Anderson was catching him. It, they'd kind of come and go and they hit lappers or whatever, but you could just tell, and Jet said as much in the post-race press conference, I was kind of just pacing them and I'm trying to save you know, some energy in the tank in case they made a late race push. Which was smart. I mean, mm -hmm. the kid can think. He can't do math, but he can think when it comes to racing. Yeah. For him to be like, okay, don't don't go too hot now. Like, just just mind the the gap. And that sounded like I was getting on the the tube over in the UK. But um, <laughs> just you know, take it easy. Don't get nuts in case they get these guys make a hard push at the end. I've got enough energy to go. That's man. That's a that. Those are the tactical uh, thought processes of a really seasoned guy. Not yeah. a rookie. Yeah, he definitely does not look like a rookie. No. Out there. No. Um, but yeah, like when he makes those little mistakes, that's where like you'll see Jason kind of like, oh, they're now in the same spot or he's kind of reeling him in. But Jet will kind of turn it up a little bit yeah. more and get back to where he was, you yeah. know? So it's like, oh, he's coming, but no, he's not. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm getting him. Oh, yeah. no, I'm losing him. Yeah. I'm getting him. That's yeah. like we're watching that the whole time. Like, wait, Jason is catching Okay, no, he's not. Oh, yeah. he just made a mistake. He is catching him now for this next lap. And then he gets on. Like, so he does a really good job at just like managing managing, yeah. managing the race. And there is some chatter. He, he became uh, the first rookie to win their premier class debut. And there's a bunch of people online chattering. No, he's not. Damon Huffman did it. This guy did it. Or uh, not Damon Huffman. Damon Bradshaw. Damon Bradshaw won the season opener in, opener in 1990 in the premier class, which was the 250 class then. But he raced San Diego in 89 and got a third. So all of these guys and everyone that they've named, it's like, no, they raced a race here. McGrath did some races in 92 when he was a 125 guy on a 450. He, he still got a, a, Anaheim was the second or third round in 93 when he won his first race. So even that year, he didn't win the opener. So Yeah, so, so it'd kind of be like, like how Hampshire did that one 450 race on Daytona. Right. So he's already done one. Yeah, um, yeah. but... <clears throat> How, what are your thoughts though about like the super motocross you know because yeah it's kind of still a super cross race and he won that yeah as and, a rookie. and there's people that are making that argument too la especially i would say that was a super cross track yeah but there wasn't whoops and it was it's a hybrid track so yeah. when you're talking super cross he's the only rookie who in in their first super cross race on a 450 or premier class bike won the only guy so incredible. We watched some history last night yeah. and um, doesn't surprise me. And it got brought up in the, in the post-race presser again about him saying he, he wants to go after McGrath's record. And um, some people thought that was cocky or, or, uh, or arrogant of him to say. And it's, he, he even said, he goes, look, I don't know if it's possible. It's so many wins. It's hard to like even get your head around it. He goes, but the kid's 20. Yeah. He goes, and I, for me, it's just yeah. a motivator. It's something, it's a, it's a goal I've set up here to like get me out of bed every morning. 
and make me go work my butt off. Mm -hmm. So I'm not mad at it. Like, I think it's rad, you yeah. know? Um, and really, if you broke it down, let's, most guys have about, let's say eight years in the premier class once they get there. I don't think it's out of line to say he can win 10 races this year. Um, 10 times eight is 80, you know? So no, it's not gonna be easy, yeah. but it's yeah. certainly within the realm of possibility. And to me, I, I think it's great. He's got a goal. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go back. Uh, the, the biggest battle of the night really was Anderson and, and Cooper Webb mm -hmm. for that second and third spot. And I love seeing Cooper just, he's such a, he just digs in like a tick, man. And he yeah. will not give up. No. I love that about the guy. Yep. He is so stubborn, man. Like, it has to be so frustrating riding in front of him. And Anderson did a great job of managing it. He didn't get flustered. He, or as James would say, flustrated. Um, he just did his thing and, and held him at bay the whole time. And Anderson rode... A really, really good race. I didn't see one big mistake out of him all night yeah. in the main event. Did no, you? I no, mean, maybe I missed one. No, but. Anderson, I mean, I feel like there's a whole, or the old Anderson is back. Yeah. So 2018 or, you know, whatever his title yeah, was. He's, he, he, is. he rode that race so good. And but, for, he, but he actually looked more controlled to me. Yeah. I feel like back then it was more jersey flapping and Yeah, feet. just kind of wild all over yeah. the place. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right on that. He definitely looked a lot more control. Um but I was actually surprised for how much Coop was pushing him that like they still weren't able to like get Jet, you know? Yeah, but but Jet didn't check out. That's true. They were they ran his pace. He just got a little gap early. Now, how much more could he have pulled out if he needed to? I that's what we don't know. Time yeah. is going to have to tell, right? Yeah. Jet's going to need to get a bad start, and then let's see what he does. Yeah. Um, but for this opening round, and again, it's really hard to measure the field just by this one race. And, and well, we everybody talks about that, and it's true. Yeah. This is one race in a lot, and guys have so much nerve. They're shaking their bikes down. Give it some time to play out. Yeah, and like they say, you can never really leave A1 thinking that that's how the season's going to go. Right, exactly. So. Um, okay, going back to fourth, um, so those were our top, oh, let's talk about Sexton. Sexton was third, really got handed that podium position um, when Coop went down, and yeah. Coop crashed, we, we should mention this, really weird, it, there must have been a, just a small little knot, knot or a knuckle just outside of the main line, and this is what got Thrasher in the 250 main, and it got his teammate Webb here in the end of this one, I mean, it hit him, and he went straight over, it went yeah, over fast. And that that thing, like, I remember we were talking about that in press. Like, that jump was so weird how, like, the lip is going. I mean, it's just fully off-camera kind of lip. And it's, and it's a pretty small jump. So I don't know if it's just how they preloaded into it. Like, they're just carrying yeah. so much speed coming into it, you know? like. Well, I think they, you know, they, they got a good little rut going. And it looked like Cooper was almost coming inside of, like, cutting mm -hmm. out of the rut a little bit. And that's where that little knuckle was. If you stayed in the rut, it was okay. But what those guys were trying to do is accelerate hard through the rut and then just be off the throttle so they'd stay low over the hip mm -hmm. and then be able to land right at the top and drive. So you're already off the throttle, which means it's going to want to kick. lift the rear end up, yeah. But it's fine until you hit that little knuckle, right? And then it, it, it's over quick. Yeah. And that's what happened to both of those guys. I was like, whoa, what just happened? And... <laughs> Coop. So lucky he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds he's, like he's he, tough. we tried to reach out to him. He didn't get back to you yeah. via text, but he posted it on his Instagram. He's good. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I would say overall for Chase Sexton, uh, he had a moment. He was in that lead pack running the pace, which we saw him on press day and went, Ooh, he does yeah. not look great. Yeah. Uh, just looked uncomfortable. And I even asked in the presser, like, what changes did you make? Because it was a big, visually a big improvement from Friday to Saturday. And he goes, yeah, just, it was little things. He goes, but he goes, you should have seen me because <laughs> you should have seen me a month ago. He goes, you'd have really made a comment. And I'm like, oh, all right. And I think Chase is going to progress each weekend. They're going to learn, they're going to learn new stuff, what setting works. Cause he has nothing really, I mean, other than the other riders, but, um, and this is a new chassis. Yeah. So I feel like he's going to learn a lot as the season goes on. I do too. And, um, I think he was doing his best to not be frustrated. He's trying to keep telling himself, like, okay, I, I just, yeah. it's a process. Like, don't get, yeah, don't get frustrated. A third for him, points wise, great. Yeah. So, and I, and I did message him <clears throat> after the race. We talked a little bit how it's like this is a long season. So this third, 
this is a really good start. Great start, yeah. So, Can you tell me you're on the podium, <clears throat> points-wise? Yeah. No problem, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be a concern. Um, I thought it was interesting in the press conference too, he said, um, the back end of the bike feels awesome. It's great, mm -hmm. it's the front end. We're just still trying to figure out a feel on the front end that I want. That was the same problem he had at Honda. Interesting. And so yeah. I, I was just thinking like, well, I wonder, you know, what is he doing? It, he's gotta just, maybe he's just so weight forward or so, um, I don't know, man, like kind of Stuart, how he used to ride so far yeah. forward over the bike. Yeah. Not, not even physically, but just like, he's, he's, his brain is a step ahead of where the bike is. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Um, almost overriding it. And I, I wonder if that, I don't know. I've just, I thought it was interesting. He said they're, they're looking for front end feel that he wants. And I'm like, well, I've heard that before. Yeah. So interesting, but yeah. I thought it was a good night. I thought he, he made big improvements. So that's great. Um, what else? Let's talk about, let's talk about some drama in the pack a little bit. Dean Wilson and Vince Freezy. Oh man. This was an ugly one. And we, you and I watched, uh, we didn't see it happen. We caught the aftermath and then we were both going, did Freeze, did Freeze take Vince or uh, uh, Dean out right there? And then we, well, we saw Dino picking his bike up, Freeze walk off and leave, walk up the tunnel. Yeah, I, was like, like, I was like, why is he leaving his bike? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was weird. Yeah. Uh, we, after the race, uh, we, you got a hold of Dino. Yeah. And, um, uh, well, well, we'll let him say it in his own words. He's just, he's just such a f he's the biggest f idiot I know. Like, he is the dumbest writer on planet Earth. So, uh, as you hear from Dino there, not super stoked on what happened. And you, if you watch that video, I'm, I'm a little torn because if that wasn't Vince Freeze, let's say that was, uh, I don't know, insert any writer here, right? I kind of went, well, Dino left that door wide open. He went into that berm wide, which if you're by yourself is, is the right line, right? Like set up and rail that turn and triple out. But on the opening lap, you probably got to cover that inside a little bit. Yeah. And, and so I, I, he's got to take a little bit of that responsibility. At the same time, anytime you come in and make a block pass and you both go down, that was a mistake. You miscalculated and that's your bad. Well, and <clears throat> Vince and Dean have this have history. beef. Yeah, and they have this beef right now. So it's like, it's like Vince knew that was Dean right there. Yeah. You know, so it's like... I know, and you damn know, it, it's the opening lap. You're, yeah, you know, like, like, come on, come man. On. Yeah. You know, that you, was... you, you know, it's Dean right there. You guys have some history with this beef. Like, man, just. Well, <laughs> Dean's going to let it rip, it sounds oh, like. Yeah. He, he's not yeah, going to play gonna nice anymore. anymore. And so, this is going to be a fun one to keep an eye on as the rest of the season plays out. Because if Dean gets a shot at Vince. Oh, it's, it's on. Oh, and, and trust boy. me. It's full it is, torpedo mode. Yeah, yeah. Dean's not going to let it, anything fly. He should just get like a tomahawk missile on the back of his butt patch <laughs> and, uh, and just put Vince on it or something. VF. Yeah. Um, well, that was something else. Um, what else we got? AP. Let's talk about him. He was fourth on the night. And it was a quiet fourth. He was never up in the mix. He kind of always came from, you know, mid-pack starts. But he rode great. He was riding really well. Yeah. Anything you saw from him? Yeah, he. I mean, <clears throat> he kind of rode his own race. I feel the whole the whole race, but I mean, he looked really good and was always moving forward. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think you're gonna see. I mean, I personally think you're gonna see some podiums out of him this year. One hundred percent. And I will say the same thing for the guy who got fifth, which was Dylan Ferrandez. Very quiet night. He was never in the limelight up in the top three. But he was always going forward, and he wound up fifth on the night in a stacked class yeah, he, on a bike that he's only been on. What did what did the Ziggy say? I mean, uh, six weeks. Yeah, not 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 that much time on it. But he that bike looked really good. Like it handled yeah. really good. Yeah, Phoenix Honda and Factory Connection is a really good combination. Mm -hmm. Ziggy is super dialed in when it comes to setting bikes up and chassis and getting people comfortable. Yeah, and Dylan has said as much. He goes, I finally this is the best I've ever felt on a 450 in Supercross and. I feel like I can race it like I could my 250. Mm -hmm. Well, man, you hear that. That's that's what you want to hear out of a guy and give him a little time. Again, this is a kid that's going to build and by four or five rounds in, that dude will be scrapping for podiums. Yeah, and I feel like the program he's on too, there's not that much pressure. Right. You know, and just like the whole vibe around that yeah. team, like being around being around them on like before the race, um, it just feels very relaxed. And um, I think that's what you know, Dylan wants. I, I agree. I think it's a great spot for him. Yeah. Webb ended up sixth after picking it up and 
It was actually a good finish for him because he looked a little rattled. I was, oh, he, I was kind of like, I mean, uh oh, how, how couldn't you be? I mean, the guy literally face. He did face plant. <laughs> I mean, dirty. I was like, that's the one thing about Coop. I mean, the guy's just so tough, man. You yeah, know, like he you is. think like that crash is gonna put him out for the rest of the night. Nope, he gets back up. He's like, I'm finishing this race. Yeah, and six. You know? That's not terrible points. No. That's he he salvaged that and he's yeah. ready to fight. Barsha was seventh. A bit of a quiet night for him. He rode well. But, yeah, but just sort of in that spot. This is another one right here, eighth place, Justin Cooper. I said to you, last year when he filled in, uh, I think he did four or five rounds, I'd have to go back and look. He was in the top 10 every single time. Yeah. And I was like, huh, as a filling guy, like that's really good. Um, and in a stacked class in one of the thickest fields we've seen in a minute, he pulls off an eighth. And he made his way through past Eli. Past Eli. That's where you're like, Justin Cooper just passed Eli, I'm like, no way. Yeah, like, it's so, pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, so that Justin, he's riding really good. Yeah, Star Racing uh, Monster Energy Yamaha really um, has done a good job developing these guys and, and making them all happy. Now, in ninth was Eli Tomek. This was probably the uh, biggest bummer of the night, I would say. And I want to hear what you think. Do you read a lot into that? I mean, he's never been good at A1. Last year he did win, but... Yeah. Given so, the fact that he hasn't raced in, what has it been, six months, seven months? Yeah. So, I mean, I definitely had, I mean, I definitely had higher hopes for him. I mean, I, I, I picked him to win. Yeah, I did like, too. Like, I picked him to win. I did too. Um, but I want to say his average finishes at A1 or 10th from what I looked at. Like, that's what his average place is. Right. So, um, it's not like really out of the, you know... Yeah. normal that he's yeah. finishing ninth and you still you, you can't count him out i mean he's coming back from an injury he's still figuring some stuff out um i think you're gonna see a tomac turn around here yeah. soon you know what this reminded me of is is when he rode cowies because he looked if i'm watching him i'm just going oh he's tired he looks tired that's what it looked like to me i'll bet and he he's super quiet he plays everything really close to his chest but I, it, he either had arm pump or he was tired. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he was just holding his breath and you know, which would be totally understandable. I, again, you can train and do all the laps you want by yourself or with one other guy. In a main event, when it's, it's race time, you end up holding your breath. It's just a different game. And yeah. it's, hard to, it's hard to duplicate that or replicate that. And so it's been a long time since he's yeah. raced. Yeah, so. it's, I mean, and he doesn't train with the whole team. Mm -mm. Um, I mean, he'll, he'll ride with them every once in a while, but for the most part, he's up at his yeah. own track in Colorado. So yep. he'll, he'll, I, I, he'll figure it out. He's going to figure it out. Yep. Uh, Ken Rock's in 10th. He went down in the first turn, I want to say. Stewart was 11th. Bad night for him, too. I was I had bigger hopes for, for Malcolm, and I think yeah, he's, he's riding well. Yeah, so he's we'll, riding good. We'll hopefully see him get better. Uh, AC was 12th. Kind of a uh, mid... As the kids would say, it was a mid finish for him, you know. Yeah. Um, and Prado was 13th. And again, I tell you, he's in the top 10 if those whoops were not there. If that was, if they had no whoops on that track, he's in the top 10 already. Yeah. Because he looked super squirrely in the whoops. Like he, he, you could tell he would try to jump and that wouldn't work. And then he'd try to skim. He was moving. He was moving all over, trying different things. And he just like couldn't figure out how yeah. to get through them. I mean, his cornering was like unreal. Cornering was great. His timing is great. Like yeah. he... You can already tell he likes Supercross. Like, oh, yeah. You're going to see him back here full-time in 2025, yeah. which is rad. I love mm -hmm. it. I think he's a super cool dude. Uh, I will say his whole entourage kind of went walking by us in the pits, and I got hit with such a gnarly whiff of like this. It was like a wave of perfume and cologne. <laughs> I was like, whoa, it smelled like a, a gang of Brazilian pimps. <laughs> but it was good smell. It was, just a, it was a lot. Yeah. Um, I like him, though. I just think he's... Yeah, he's the like, interview we did with him, he's... Yeah. He's smiley, he's friendly, his English is great, so he'll, mm -hmm. he'll fit right in here, he won't have any kind of issues. Uh, I'm, I'm really stoked on this. Yeah, guy. he's catching on quick, like you said, how he's got his timing down. I mean... Yeah, he wasn't... He, think back to, like, Tortelli and Albi and, like, these other world champions that come over. Yeah. Their case and stuff. I mean, those guys were scary to watch the first several years in Supercross. Just, they, they couldn't get the timing. Jorge has it. Yeah. Like... No problem. Like you said, it's just once he figures out those whoops, he'll be fine. That's it. Yeah. So that's it, man. Uh, I, I think that um, 
We've got a lot to look forward to next weekend. Uh, more and more questions to be answered as it rolls on, but a fun opening round. Um, I, I, I don't think we got the best of everybody. The fights, the battles, like I think guys were just kind of going, let me just get through this opener, you know? Yeah, yeah. I do have one thing though. Okay. That I'm, I'm, I was curious why Christian Craig pulled off. Did you see anything happen? I didn't. Um, you know, we had talked to Christian earlier in the day, and um, he seemed okay, but he's not. He didn't look comfortable all weekend. Yeah. Um, just didn't look like himself. I mean, that kid's got so much talent. He's so beautiful when he's on, you know, and he just looked uncomfortable. Well, and that's what kind of like threw me off a little bit is here I'm I'm seeing and hearing that he's riding so good at the test tracks, which he is. He's yeah. riding really good. And then the whole, yeah, the whole weekend just seemed, there's something just off about the riding, you know? And I just, I was like, yeah. he just pulled off. And he didn't crash. He pulled over the mechanics area and left. Yeah. And I was like, hmm. Interesting. It is interesting. Um, so we'll, we'll see if we can reach out and see what's going on there, but might be something, maybe something. Yeah. So, um, anything else in your notes you want to talk about? I think that's, I think that's we it. We covered now, it. Ping. All right. Well, listen, for Bruce Murata, I'm David Pingree. I want to th say thanks again to our partners. We really appreciate Maxis coming on board to support this. Check those guys out. If you're looking for truck tires, man, they, they make some really neat stuff. So get over and look at what they've got. And then also the boys at Rock and Turf. Uh, if you need any kind of artificial grass, they can sell it to you. Flat work, you know, concrete. They do an amazing job. Super, super creative. Very, very high quality stuff. And then check out their mats. Uh, just go to Instagram, uh, at Rock and Turf, just like it sounds, Rock and Turf. And uh, you can see these mats they're selling. They're rad. If you're camping for your motorhome, for your trailer, as a, as a changing mat for gear, which is what I use it for, awesome stuff. So stoked to have them on board. Stick around. Thursdays, we've got our Sight Lap show coming. We're going to break down everything that we see coming for San Francisco. And there's some interesting stuff uh, on the horizon. So check it out Thursday mornings. We'll see you guys then.